What's going on YouTube? Uh, today we're going to be cutting up this perfectly good fox body and we're going to be putting these fender flares onto these fenders. So the first thing you want to do is get these side moldings out of the way. Um, a lot of people actually cut their fender flares around the side moldings but it, um, it's actually going to give you a better fit to cut the side moldings. I tried to remove this one here and it broke in half so you really want to be careful. Um, the previous one that I removed is actually made out of like a flexible plastic rubbery material um, so I wasn't really expecting this one to snap in half so just be careful I have to repair that later uh, for this one I may just peel this one partially back or just kind of see what it does but uh, the this molding will be not be going underneath the fender flare we're just going to cut it short and contour it to the fender flare um, so once you have your moldings out of the way um, then you can mock up the fender flare onto the fender and take a look at it. Alright, so once you got it mocked up on there, uh, you, know, you want to make sure that, uh, that your lines are lining up the best you can get them to line up. So that's actually flush. Um, doesn't look like it on the camera, but it's sitting pretty flush. Um, you know, everything's lined up. It's not sitting below the lines to the actual fender. That's going to get pushed up once I mark it. But you want to make sure that you got it in uh, exactly how you want it to sit before you mark it. And then um, you're going to push it down, make sure it's as flat, as flush as you can get it. And then you're going to mark your holes. Alright, last thing you want to do is go ahead and tape your arch out so that you know where your fender flare is going to be. And you're going to take the flare off and uh, you can draw a line where you want to cut or you can just freehand it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and freehand it. So. You definitely don't want to cut the line where you drew, um, where you traced the outside of your fender because then you're not going to have anything to mount it to. You want to look at your holes and you want to go, you know, a, a reasonable distance below them. So I think I'm probably going to go like a half inch underneath my holes with my line. And to keep from really cutting too far back on the fender because my wheel travel is not going to impact right here, I think I'm going to start here and work my way up and across and make sure that I leave space underneath my uh, my holes that I've marked out. Alright, so at this point the fender is chopped, uh, there's no going back now. You can either uh, take your fender flare and bolt it directly to the fender, uh, but what we're actually going to do here is take these threaded rivets, these are called riv nuts, so you rivet it down and then you're able to actually insert a screw into there and that way you can screw it and unscrew it a little bit easier. It's a little bit cleaner. Uh, it may not be worth the trouble, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, in order to do that, you drill a hole, you rivet it down, and then you can screw into the rivet. So now I've got my hole drilled out and here's what the rivet looks like and you're going to place this rivet in here and there's a method we're going to try out since I don't have a rivet gun uh, there's actually an alternative way to get that tightened down okay so since most folks don't have a rivet gun laying around and I don't have one laying around uh, we're going to be using a different method to actually put these rivets in so once you drill out your matching hole, fit your uh, rivet into the hole. You're going to take your screw that matches the size of the rivet. So this is an M6 screw going in the M6 rivet. 
Um, I put two washers in here just to help it turn and you're going to thread your screw in there. Okay, as you can see, we've got our screw threaded in there on top of our rivet. What you're going to do in order to tighten that down and actually seal the rivet on there is you're going to have to uh, stop that thing from spinning. So I'm going to put a pair of vice grips on that smooth portion. Uh, you definitely don't want to clamp down on it to where you're going to distort the barrel of the rivet. Uh, you just want it enough to keep it from spinning while you tighten it down. Um, I can't hold the camera and do this, so I'll just show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're clamped down on the smooth portion of the rivet. And um, what we're going to do is actually turn the hex up here. And the knurled portion, if you can see it, uh, is actually going to start to crunch in. And that's what's going to hold the rivet in place. All right, as you can see, the knurled portion of the rivet is actually crunched down into place now after we just tightened it down and that's how it looks. You really want to be careful if you're doing this method. Um, you really want to be careful not to strip your threads. That can be really easy to do so just make sure you keep an eye on the back end. Uh, you know once it's smashed it's smashed. Don't try to go crazy with it because then you'll strip your threads out and then you're gonna have a really fun time trying to get this thing out of here without ruining your fender. And then you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna mount your thing after you ruin the hole. All right, so I've got two of the uh, bolts in so far, and what I'm doing is um, after I, after I make a hole, I'm just remounting the fender just to uh, make sure that my drilling points line up, and they have shifted slightly. So if you look at this one, it's it's a little bit off center. So I just want to double check each hole before I go ahead and drill a new one. That way everything can be dead center where I want it. So just make sure you double check your holes because once you drill it, you can't undrill it. So there's what the semi-finished product looks like. Everything's bolted up. So that's one fender done. Now I get to do four more times. All right, so both the fronts are on and they look pretty good. And now we're off to the rears. Um, the rears are a little bit different because of some work that I did in the past on them. Um, I had shaved the insides of the rears before, which is not something a lot of people do, but Fox bodies have really uh, skinny fender wells. So I shaved out the inside of them to get more clearance and to help tuck the wheel better. I can reach through the fender, uh, through the fender wells to the other side, um, on the other side of the fenders. So I'm going to have to go and pick up a rivet gun uh, in order to finish these up. Um, I did go ahead and chop these. So um, anytime you cut metal anywhere where there's going to be weather, you want to seal that stuff up. So I actually used silicone caulk to actually uh, help seal that raw metal and it looks a little bit messy but it's on there thick and it's going to protect it well and um, once that's actually dry I'm actually going to cover that area up with foam tape um, on a lot of the wide body videos you see them actually cut the fenders back and peel up the uh, that inner material and then weld it to the fender but I cut mine out so that's why I'm not doing that uh, mine are already gone and it's been resealed. So the rears are very similar to uh, how I did the front, um, except I just need a rivet gun because I can't really reach onto the other side and get a tool back there like I had before. Plus the rivet gun's gonna be way easier. So that's what it looks like. It's the next day. I worked on this thing all night. Uh, it's finally finished. I uh, did have a few difficulties with the uh, the riv nuts, which I'll show you in just a second. But uh, it's finally done now and it looks pretty good, so let's take a look up close. Alright, I said it was done, but it's not 100%. I still have to uh, address the trim pieces. Those are sitting in the garage. So those have to get put back on. I did trim the ones for this side, but um, the ones up front and on the other side need to get replaced. So, um... In the beginning of the video, I talked about using the riv nuts, which is uh, kind of a cool option to do. And you put these nice little studs in there, and you can screw them and unscrew them. But um, I ran into trouble last night because what happened in the rear is you can't actually reach your hand on the other side of these fenders. And that basically makes it impossible to uh, do the bootleg method of installing riv nuts. You need an actual riv nut gun, not a rivet gun. You need a special rivet gun for the riv nuts 
and uh, ended up driving all over the place last night. I found a rev nut gun. It only came with 10 rivets. You can't buy the rivets anywhere. Um, the rivets that I had didn't work with it. It became a huge pain in the butt, so what I ended up doing is actually just putting self-tapping screws in here, which I'll show you in a second. Oh, here's the self-tappers. Use these instead. Save yourself some time. Um, so these are self-tapping screws. They look fine. Um, I was going to go ahead and complete it with rift nuts, but I'm, I'm really through with those. Don't waste your time messing with rift nuts. Those are for overachievers. Um, and to be honest, these fenders actually fit better with the regular uh, self-tapping screws, so don't bother wasting your time with the rift nuts. But here's the finished product. As you can see, the wheels are sunken in pretty good. The whole reason I'm doing the fender flares on here is because the um, Steve Mass steering angle kit is actually going to push the uh, front wheels out two inches. Um, and like I said before, I didn't really want to have wide in the front and skinny in the back, so I'll be putting spacers in the rear to kind of match that width. So the wheels will be pushed back out. I won't be sunken in and the car is going to look as good as it did before actually even better there's the missing trim piece I gotta put back on that one's off that one's off that one's trimmed oh, coming together <laughs> 